And I'm gonna hit the live transcript button. All right, welcome to the February 17th uh, Chaos Common Work Group meeting. So if you could add yourself to the minutes, that would be great. Share my screen here. Uh, so hopefully you're all doing well. Got a couple things that I'd like to get through today. So uh, first is I've created a project board similar to like what we have in DEI. And I'm finding this pretty useful in terms of kind of tracking the work that we're doing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I use that on Augur too. It's pretty good. Do helpful. you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I haven't, we haven't done this in any of the working groups. Until now. Until now. now. Too. So DEI has one and, and Common has one. And it's, it's pretty great for just kind of seeing what's going on at a high level in the project. So hi, Enoch. Let me put the minutes in the chat for you here. Hey, Mart. There you go. So feel free to add yourself. That'd be great. Um, sure. So really, it's just we have just a couple metrics in progress, as you can see here, and we have one uh, that we're revisiting. I'm not sure if the not will be here today in kind of an open discussion. So I'd like to take a look at a, a few of these and we can talk about these metrics as well. Um, the, the other thing that we did or that I did was I aligned our label structure in line with what is going on in DEI. So this is the same set of labels that we have now in DEI. Our working groups had kind of started to separate in terms of how we do labels. So the hope is, is that we could get these aligned. And I followed the recommendations that were put forward by Justin in the DEI working group, just in terms of how we label, how we label labels. Does anybody have any comments on on this? Love it. They seem That's like good, they seem like good and appropriate labels. Okay. Um, one of the things that was a bit of a hassle in doing this is because I was trying to do this right before uh, the meeting is just copying labels from one working group to another working group. Yeah, that, uh, can you even do that? <laughs> you can't You can't do it through the web, but I think okay. you can, there are ways you can do it through the CLI. Oh, okay. Yep. So if anybody would like to take a look at that as to how we might be able to, to kind of move labels from one working group to another so that we're consistent is, across our labels is so is is the goal to have the labels be one of the common things in our got our dot github directory at the project level i don't know if we can do that okay i'm not so sure they, I, we so can have um issue templates in the dot github directory and uh -huh. pull request templates but i'm not sure if we can have labels so it would only be the working group labels that we would want to be the same, right? Yeah. So basically just this list that's here, these 19 labels. Okay. Like just get these over into evolution. I mean, it, it takes like right. 20 minutes if you just want to do it manually, yeah, <laughs> but no. it, it also could be automated. <laughs> yeah. Let me just, I mean, I do that. Let me take a look at that. I'll take a look at that. Okay. Um, I did, did a Google search and I came up with a blog. I posted it in the chat box. Okay. If you want to take a look at that, apparently a GUI exists to do the same thing. So Sean, did you see that blog post that Yash put in there? Uh, I, I was making a note to do it, but yeah, let me take a look. I don't know how effective it is it, but it's a place to start. Uh, the first thing that came up on the Google search. Matt, I have a related question. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff we're putting in the .github template, um, 
So like that will also apply to all the Grimoire Lab repos, right? It will. I mean, are, do they know about, <laughs> like, are they okay with that? Like, do we need to? Yeah, we definitely need to have that conversation. Okay. I, yeah. I just was making sure, because I thought, yeah. Um, things, so from what I'm understanding, as I played around with it more this week too, oh, hold on, let me just finish this note. Um, Sorry. No. Um, as far as the .github goes, yeah, we, we, we do need to, so, so that everybody knows it's coming <laughs> or what's happening at least. I mean, so far, the only things that, um, the only thing that's in there right now is the code of conduct which is consistent across everyone anyway. But things like, I think probably what, what you're talking about are like issue templates. Yeah, yeah, that thinking of the labels and making them standard across all of the repos also was, it, I know we're not doing that, but um, that kind of jogged my memory a little like, oh yeah, that will also apply to them, so. Yeah, um, and I do know that you can, overwrite from the .github repo. So you have the ability within your local repo that if you have uh, a document okay. that is coming from the .github repo, but I don't know what that would look like from a um, an issue or a pull request template. Okay. Yeah, I would hate to overwrite all their, <laughs> all their issue templates. Ta-da! <laughs> Thanks for being part of chaos. Yeah. <laughs> so I, maybe I should play around with that a little bit, like have a few um, issue templates in a repository and then put some issue templates in the .github folder and just kind of see what it looks like and what happens. Okay. Okay. Uh, great. Thank you for that. Any other comments kind of on, on this? Sean, you're taking a look at, at labels. And I think these labels yeah. will go from working the metrics working group between metrics working groups. Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. What yeah, about the uh, met metrics models? Yeah, probably so. Yeah, Yash, did you have a comment as well? Yeah, I just found out that the project isn't maintained that is mentioned in the blog. So yeah, I tried it. It didn't work. <laughs> <laughs> but that's fine. I mean, there's an if there's an API call. I I do that a lot, so I shouldn't have a hard time figuring it out. And Sean, too, like moving between from the DEI working group to the common working group for labels, they were like. 90% the same. Yeah. You know, so there wasn't there wasn't that big of a difference between yeah. the two. So yeah, the evolution I'm guessing is just got so, its own flavor of stuff just because it's done that for a while. Okay. So I'll okay. figure it out. Uh great. Thank you. All right. Any other questions on this? Nope. All good. All right. Um, the next thing, just kind of from a, this is common, like these are the common process things across the group. Um, we have this data use awareness statement and I had pointed out maybe in the community call that we had like five, Elizabeth actually found another document, <laughs> there were like six documents. Oh my God, you did not. I did. Oh my God. That we're talking about some sort of data privacy or ethics and so um, that's too many and some, <laughs> some were old and some were some were placeholders they were they were quite quite strange so I, my recommendation is um, that we have a, a single data use awareness recommendations around privacy and ethics 
as opposed to one for privacy and one for ethics. I'll stop there and see what people think of that proposal. So the proposal is to have privacy. Is it the proposal to have them separate or together? My proposal is to have them together. I think it'd be easier to follow, navigate, like, so you don't have to go to two places. I mean, privacy ultimately is a component of ethics. They're related. That was, yeah, that was why I thought they would go together. Kevin, you're unmuted. Are you trying to say something? No, I'm, I'm muted. I'm not unmuted. Did, did you say I was trying to unmute? Yeah, you, you were unmuted for just a little while. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Strangely enough. I try to follow that just in case somebody's trying to talk. No, I, I've been, on my end, I've been muted here the entire time. That's weird. <laughs> <All right. laughs> the internet wants you to talk. <laughs> uh, no, I, I guess I guess the only comment that I would make is that the, uh, the individuals that are creating those multiple documents probably aren't on the call right now. So that we might want to table this until uh, those individuals are are here for the discussion. Um, yeah, it, uh, Sophia actually was one that recommended the merger. Okay. And then Lucas has been following this as well, just kind of in this document as I've been trying to bring them together and we've been chatting in Slack. Okay. So, um, yeah, so that's, I'm trying to, yeah, I, I see point well taken. There were more people, there was an ethics document that had like Emma was on it and I think Georg was on it too. And I should probably ping them as well. Um, all right, so, so, okay. So with respect to this document, could y'all take a look at this for a second? So um, the top is, we obviously we can add more here. The top is just a lot about like what this is about and how to contribute to this thing and who we are. So then there's a section on privacy, confidential data and metrics. It's a like why privacy cares or why privacy matters in this case, things to consider around privacy, proper handling of PII, and then published guidance around privacy. I, I do kind of propose that, well, you'll see here in a second. So then we have a section on ethics and I followed the same header. So this is bad because <laughs> we have the same subheader twice, <laughs> but so we need to differentiate these two things. But confidential data and metrics, just talking about what ethics is in this context guidelines and considerations so you see i'm just kind of following i would like to call this things to consider so things to consider this needs to be written more as text this is straight from the ethics document at this point just to copy and paste that's about it so what i'm kind of proposing is a document that has this top stuff and then we have a section on privacy with the subheader confidential data and metrics, things to consider, and some some maybe some heading specific to privacy, and then any published guidance. We follow the same subheading approach under ethics. So this would actually be instead of guidelines, this would be things. like that. And we'd have a kind of this list like we have here. So the work, the work is kind of getting this, I haven't touched this yet. <laughs> I'm getting this into kind of a smaller list and in, in some narrative form. What do people think of this approach? Yeah, I think that makes total sense. And I do remember this other document. I remember working on that. So okay. I'm glad you you remembered it because I had forgotten all about it. It was, there was some, there's some good stuff in there. Yeah, yeah. So. Yeah. No, I've been editing it and looking at it. Um sense. Are you editing this document? I have been. Where? Privacy. Yeah. Oh, well, I've been editing some privacy document. 
this is the point. <laughs> yeah. It's totally real. I mean, I think I, I edited it last week. There was a document before you merged them last week. Oh, yeah. I was, then I would have kept, I would have gotten that. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes, I, I have, yeah. That is the Sorry. Document. I haven't been editing it this week, but last week I, I made some edits. Then hmm. you're good. Then that's okay. been, been captured. Yeah. I noticed when I opened the old one up yesterday that it was a pointer to this document now. So, yes. Yeah, so I just, I, we need to get everything. And if we need to split this, like no, we don't. We, we don't. we don't. We don't. I just <laughs> you. You have a very clear little thing at the top that says, "Go look at this other document. Don't edit this one." So, yeah. okay. Sorry, uh, I was not. <laughs> I was not clear about what happened there. All right, um, and there is in this list too some of the ethical stuff. I do think there's some privacy components in here as well. You know, I, I like I said, I haven't been through this in a ton of detail, so. Any other comments on this? Discussion? Yeah, I had a quick question. So I know that you were trying to mirror the two sections, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. I think that makes total sense. Are there regulations around ethics? That's just me, dumb me asking. I'm. There might be guidance. Okay. Like essentially but, don't spam your people, you know, like, yeah, is that, I mean, yeah, we have, a, you know, spam laws and things like that, I guess, but can spam. Yeah. But like, I don't know if there are other like kind of ethical things that is just more, good. but I like the published guidance, I guess would be, would be better. So we would just have to populate that. Okay. I had this like hope that Mozilla had something around published guidance on ethics. Oh, perfect. Okay. I, I hope. Doesn't it seem hope. like that, oh. that would be, doesn't that seem like that would be a group that would have something like that? <laughs> yeah, it does. Emma probably wrote it too. She's, <laughs> she's everywhere. She's like the queen of all of this. I love it. Probably. Uh, all right. Like, this is great. Uh, there's comments going on right here. Um, my, my other thought was, what do people think of, of like this? if we mirror the subheads we should probably differentiate them in a little bit of a way yeah i like that especially if we're going to link to a certain or be able to link to a certain paragraph or a certain section then yeah, yeah that makes total sense okay all right uh good any other comments on this All good? I think so. Okay, and then this, this would be the document that would be linked to in the metric. So we have that little section in the metrics template. Mm -hmm. And it says for more information or whatever it says, I don't have it in front of me, but for more info, click this thing to read, you know, <laughs> and then it goes to this. That makes sense. Yeah. All right. Makes sense to me. Would, would this be on the website as well? Because we have our chaos data policies. On yeah, the I would, yeah, I would, I, I absolutely think this would be something we would put on the website. Okay. I mean, um, I don't have a, a math just asking. Yeah, me. like when it comes to design, I, I, I see the privacy statement as a, it's usually navigable from the top, but it's also often a direct link on the bottom of a web page, the footer. <clears throat> being, being privacy friendly is considered cool. Okay. I'm not a. Uh, I'm not sure if we if we host it on the website or if we just link to it from the website. I think that's uh, oh, one of the one of the big design considerations we have when we're revamping the website is kind of simplifying things and making clear paths. So, uh, in general, I would say this document could exist on the website, kind of the same way a code of conduct or a mission statement could exist. 
uh, but until we get into the the design of the website and what the kind of the simplification and those clear paths mean i i don't know if it would live on the website as a as a document it might just live on the website as a link uh, and if it does live on the website as a link if it's if it's linked from every single metrics page uh, and possibly linked from that there is a data ethics disclaimer on the yep on the main okay. metrics page. So if we, if we link it there as well, then we're talking hundreds of links to this document from the website. And at that point it's, do we really need to host it on the website? So just something, and I don't have an answer to that yet. I'm, I think I think that's an answer that we will figure out when we start to uh, simplify cool. and revamp the website. Cool. So then from a simplicity perspective, we have the chaos privacy policy document, which is the document that talks about how we as a chaos community handle data. And then we have the document that is the one that we were just looking at, which is basically telling others who use metrics things that they should think about. And then we're done. Are these documents going to live in the community repo or are we moving all of that stuff into the dot GitHub? Uh, I'm repo? not I'm not sure. So I, there's like the dot GitHub repo has, it seems like it has limits on the types of documents you can put in there. Probably. They get picked up like the naming convention. Okay. So if I put it in the dot GitHub repo, I'm not sure what my name available names are. You know what I mean? Okay. But in, if it could go in the dot GitHub repo, that would be, that'd be interesting. Okay. Um, okay. All right. Uh, thank you, everybody. One was question good. I have yeah. is how uh, are as a chaos data handling policy are in line with this document? Because we are guiding others on the data policy and are our policy in alignment with this or are they little different or deviated just i'm not sure i haven't looked at that so well the, just a point for the hopeful, the hopeful answer is that they're in line with one another <laughs> <laughs> that's all I, I haven't looked either so that's all yeah. i can say right now okay all right um, any other, it's a good question. Any other comments or questions? All right, uh, Elizabeth, this next one is one that you had put in here, the item for discussion. Do you wanna talk about that? Oh yeah, um, so, you know, talking about the handbook at, in the community meeting, um, it's kind of maybe becoming an issue when um, we do have, um, Google Summer of Code students or other mentor uh, mentored students that work on really crucial stuff that you know we use a lot and we love, but then they leave and we, and we never see them again. So like we need to maybe t have something in place that's like a sharing of knowledge or like a handing off or something. I know we have like mentors that supposedly are you know involved in the project and, and kind of know, but um, it, it feels like maybe, but that like those mentors don't necessarily own that project. So the project just kind of is left without an owner or mm -hmm. a maintainer after they're gone. So I don't know, just a, something to think about. We don't have to decide it today what the process will be, but kind of like an exit interview. Kind of, yeah. And like, um, you know, just that person to really we need also a, someone to step step up and say, I will take this on in their place if they should leave. Maybe that's right. go ahead, Kevin. Sorry. I was gonna say documentation around the code and process uh is probably uh we should probably make that a requirement for all google of google summer of code projects uh, if it's not already and like how do we yeah how do we decide who the owner or maintainer of that project will be moving forward i actually i, I like this we could put so Kevin, how is the, the documentation around the code and process 
different than what might be normally accepted or uh, expected in the summer? It's, I would say it's not. Uh, I'm, or I do, so I don't I don't know what's expected for all Google okay. Summer of Code projects. Uh, so I know in the in the Google Summer of Code project uh, that that I mentored uh, that Yash was on. Uh, we spent a considerable amount of time documenting the process. Mm -hmm. uh, and, uh, and I believe Yash and Ritik also created uh, documentation around the software itself, the Mars, Mars software. Uh, so uh, now I don't know if that is common in the other Google Summer of Code projects. Gotcha. Uh, but it, it should probably be required for all of the Google Summer of Code projects if it's, if it's not. Gotcha, okay. Thank you. Um, I might also like to ask, we could ask these in the, the application process, like Kevin, to your point, like these are the things that are gonna be expected of you. Um, and maybe to your point, Elizabeth, we could ask, maybe maybe not quite like an exit interview, but you know, one of the things that you need to do as a mentor and a mentee is think about how this is going to be handed off to the community. Like, Oh, yeah, what, like what, what working group this would live in, <laughs> you know, where this will be talked about, <laughs> who the maintainer yeah. will be, things like that. I mean, we hope that everyone stays forever, but <laughs> it's not always practical when they actually, you know, get employment and have other things to do. <laughs> so it goes. <laughs> in general, I've found that things that have utility, things that people are using uh, are maintained and, and paid attention to. So if, uh, if there is a lack of interest in maintaining it, uh, I, I suppose we might question whether or not we need it. That's fair. My guess is from Elizabeth, and you can tell me if I'm wrong, is it comes from the handbook that we all sort of want <laughs> and we yeah. all like. Yeah. But we just, we, it seemed like it was just kind of out there on its own, like an island. Yeah. And, you know, as a community manager, I kind of feel like that maybe should have been my responsibility to kind of keep track of that. And I did not at all. Mm -hmm. so. <laughs> so, whoops, my bad. Um, but yeah, I think, you know, and I'm, you know, even thinking of things like the DEI badging stuff, um, we, we kind of do have a plan in place now, but, you know, yeah. like Asta is busy, so she can't be the one to maintain that forever. And yeah. so like that, that's obviously we really, really need, but we, we didn't have a great handoff plan for that either. So, right. um, so yeah, I think just, you know, in the future, just something to, to think about. Okay. Kevin, did you have another comment? You're still unmuted. Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I think that's that's a good comment, though. I, I don't think. I suppose. I suppose on on reflecting reflecting on that, we aren't we aren't that good at path to leadership, as a as a project. Uh, and that that is that is something that uh, we could probably uh, do better. All right. Cool. All right. Uh, I yeah. Yeah, yeah. I would agree on the documentation point, which Kevin said. Like, uh, after the code, documenting is kind of a painful task for us. But I found that after four to five months, it's really necessary that you document everything. So, yeah. All right. So, a plus one from Yash. Yeah. <laughs> right on. All right. Cool. All right. Thank you. Uh, any last comments on this? So Elizabeth, how do you want to proceed with this? Does it, how should we make it? I don't it? know. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. Um, I think that as Kevin suggested, adding it to the, the um, requirements for the GSOC students coming up um, or any other mentorship, um, like if we do the She Code Africa would be the same. Um, and in the meantime, the, uh, the one project that kind of stands out to me is the handbook. So I'll take that um, and just kind of uh, as like the maintainer of it in general, if that's are cool. You, are you going to leave that on Gitbook or are you looking to 
move it uh, to a different platform. I do not care at all. Like I'm not going to make more work for myself. So <laughs> I'm going to leave it just right where it is for now, unless um, we want to move it in the website redesign. If, if you want to put it somewhere else, totally fine with me. I have no strong feelings about that. I mean, there, there, there would be some value in, in presenting it on, on the website. Uh, however, I, I don't think uh, the handbook is one of those things where uh, it's useful if people continue to, uh, to edit and add things. So wherever we, wherever we keep it, it should be very accessible and open. hundred percent. Yep. Uh, and I'm, I'm, I've never been sure that Gitbook was that platform just because we don't, we don't, as a group, we don't use Gitbook, right? It's not where we do our work. It's not how we, yep. it's this, it's this, uh, it's another process we're adding uh, that, that kind of complicates the, uh, the work we do. Yeah. And I would love to see it. I mean, I, maybe I do have strong feelings about it after all. <laughs> I don't know. Um, I, I would love to see it as part of the knowledge base if we, if we do end up going in that, in that direction. Yeah, I would like that as well. Okay. What, what I recalled from the Gitbook uh, uh, when uh, 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 that uh, student was working on that, uh, I forgot his name, sorry. Yeah, sure. uh, uh, yeah just correct. Uh, that the goal was like to have a, it integrated with the GitHub because we, uh, we, we do all our work on the GitHub and Gitbook was integrated with the GitHub. So we make changes to the GitHub. It it somehow translated to the Gitbook uh, automatically. That was the integration he did it. I'm not sure how he did it because I was not involved in that uh, project, but this is what I sense it. Like it has the integration with the GitHub. So if we make changes with the GitHub, it also gets reflected to the Gitbook. That was the theme. Okay, that makes sense. Thanks, Manan. That makes sense. Yep. Okay. I'll kind of second Kevin's point on Gitbook. You know, if I think about the technologies that are used or the tools that are used in the CAS project, it's largely Google Docs, GitHub, Slack, WordPress. Like the, those, those cover the majority of how we operate and Gitbook is, is the one <laughs> a little out of band on that. The only thing that I was suggesting was like, we just do the work on a GitHub and it gets integrated with the Git book and it uh, automatically gets updated. That's uh, No, I understand. You're, yeah, you're correct, Vinod. Uh, yeah. I think the, and I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, I can I can be quiet for a moment. That's okay. I mean, <clears throat> we only used it for the handbook. I think that the person who oversaw the handbook liked that tool and that's how it happened. Probably use Pandoc to convert it to something easier. Uh, so if, if if the documents are currently completely all uh, built in GitHub Markdown and stored in, in Markdown repositories, uh, then we could just bypass Gitbook altogether. And uh, uh, in the website revamp, we could move it into uh, uh, a website knowledge base so which would eliminate the need for get book all this is where they are right now okay that's that's all of them uh i don't know i think so okay. yeah yeah and these are all in the github so that's where gitbook was integrated so we can get rid of gitbook and integrate it with the website but we'll have the same knowledge base I suppose that would be ideal, just so we're we're removing kind of one layer of presentation, abstraction, right? Yep. Yep. Agree. Okay. Great. Uh, thank you for that. All right. So uh, we're not going to have time to really work on any metrics at this point. I would like to say that. I'm sorry. Did anybody have any last comments, Elizabeth? Maybe the any one last other words. 
<laughs> yeah, the one the one last thing is like we there needs to be an action item I think to um to get this information into the application process for GSOC. Okay. Um who would that be you, Sean? Like who are you kind of yeah. 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 So what is it I have to get in the application? That, that part of the but just making clear that part of applying includes high attention to documentation for any project as well as a period of time uh, or a consideration of how the project will be handed off when GSOC is over. Okay. We could I don't know that's something we'd look at it in the micro tasks, but just being explicit up front. Okay. Uh, I, I think we could add it. We could add it as a sentence or two in the uh, in the template that we have for those. It's easy uh, enough to do. You know where yeah. we where we talk about the the technology they would the skills that they mm -hmm. would need. One of the skills could be documentation. I need, let's see, GSOC interest. Yeah. Okay. Just gonna add something here. So I do have a comment about the since we're since we are looking at the community repo uh -huh. uh, and the handbook in there, and we've been discussing the uh, the dot GitHub repo. Uh -huh. uh, I do think we we kind of need to have a discussion about what the purpose of the community repo is, uh, maybe what the purpose of the metrics repo is. And what the purpose of the GitHub, the dot GitHub repo is, okay. and make sure that we know exactly what those three, I think mean, those three repos specifically, because those three repos would all be kind of repos that mm. uh, support all of chaos, right? Yes. Uh, so do we do we just need one repo to do all those things? Do we need the three? If we do need the three. We need to be very clear about what each one is for, uh, and we should go through and organize them uh, to accommodate that mission. Uh, and I know looking at the community repo right now, there's a ton of good stuff in there and there's a lot of templates, uh, but it's also kind of noisy and hard to navigate. So I would, I think we need to uh, clean it up a little bit based on the conversation that I yeah. think we need I think to we need a, a mentorship folder and also maybe a governance folder. Would yeah, help. That's fair. Uh, I think there was a governance section. Governance the, was this, this governance was this whole repo until we yep. changed the name. Correct. Yeah, so now everything uh, seems to go in the main thing. I don't like that. Uh, yeah, so maybe that's if someone if if we want to meet outside of this call and talk about that and maybe do the work together, I'd be uh, willing to do that. Okay. Uh, or uh, so I do know in the metrics template right now there are some. Or I'm so in the metrics repo right now there are some templates yeah and those those templates could be moved to the yeah, and that's about it too the community <laughs> repo, right? there's not much in the metrics repo at all it's those templates and they could easily just live right here Matt, if you go back to that community repo there is an about statement there that i think i wrote a while back uh up at the top there over on the right. So I don't know. See it? No. Oh. Over here under about. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So maybe we could just update that to reflect other stuff. We're adding it in. Yeah. Okay.
Kevin, do you want to have a meeting or do you think you could maybe start? I don't know. I mean, is that, is that something we need to discuss or? Yeah, probably. So hmm. I, um, could we do it via Slack? Uh, I don't know. We should try. I mean, I can tell you on Slack, I could like help take care of that and at least just get it down to the discussion yeah. of two. I mean, I suppose we could just we could just put that question out on Slack, like, hey, this is the issue. Yeah. Should we meet and talk about it and see see what comments we get based on that? Yeah, we can try that. So <clears throat> well, like I said, I can get this. I mean, even without discussion, I moving the templates out of the metrics. Like if I come, but then we won't have a metrics repo. That's okay. I'm okay with that. <laughs> Are you? Oh, yeah. Are you sure you're not going to have remorse about uh, this is it. This the is... uh, the metrics template or the metrics repo? That's it. That would be uh, the irony. Would be perfect. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like this is it. This is all that's in there. <laughs> There's just nothing in here, you know. So I kind of have a I kind of have a thought that the uh, that we could uh, the community repo itself could end up being the uh, the handbook. Mm -hmm. So perhaps we could structure the community repo in a way that it is would match the <sighs> the headers that you might use in a in a community handbook. Uh, and then when we uh, when we do build the the knowledge base, we can just pull these documents directly in. Uh, however, the maybe the the design of the community repo could have a, a parallel structure to a, a community handbook. So, like when you say like headers, you just mean like folders that would kind of represent. Yeah, yeah. The folder the folder would be a header for a section, right? Uh, and then eventually when we when we do actually populate and create the community repo then most of the work is already done okay uh, just a thought okay mm. Okay, cool. Thank you. All right. Well, we're, we really have no time now. Um, <laughs> it's just, I will say, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm happy that we're able to talk about these things in a working group. Um, so I know it's, it's taken some time, but I also think that it kind of shows that we've had a backlog on some of these, these types of community related concerns. Um, and when no working group really picks them up, they don't get done. They just don't get done. Yeah. So, um, there are a couple metrics that are out there right now. Um, occasional contributors is, I think, pretty much ready to go. So we're just kind of moving forward on that one. Um, Vinod, you had had one on organizational diversity that you were revisiting. I don't know if you have any updates there. Well, nothing there. Should I just created a template of the from the metric and added the content over there, but I haven't revisited it. Like, just I just created a template and for the community okay. to review. Could you maybe before the next meeting, yep. maybe take a little yeah. bit of a pass on it and just yeah, kind of I'll do that. I think it's reading. Yeah, assign okay. me an action item and I'll do it. And then, um, so these are the other two, time waiting for submitter action and time waiting for reviewer action. They are, these were ones that had been worked on quite a while ago. Um, and they seem to have stalled, but they have quite a bit of st stuff in them. Um, 
is anybody interested in taking a look at these? I think <coughs> Daniel had been working on them. <coughs> Does anybody have an interest in, in helping move these forward? Even just like kind of looking at them so we can talk about them <laughs> in the next meeting. Which one are you asking for time waiting for reviewer action? Either one, submitter action or reviewer action. They're both pretty far along. Yeah. Uh, I can take a look at it. Okay. Thanks, Vinod. Yeah. Uh, why I'm not seeing that document for the uh, this organizational diversity? I created it. And yeah, it's, it's in an issue. You had it in an issue. Okay. Mm. Yeah. It and I posted a link in the issue. So I know I must have just copied it wrong. Okay, that's I'm, why I was like, it's there. Uh, you are in the main kiosk, not in the working group. Oh no, I know. I just okay. I was okay. It's, okay. it's there without going through all this. Okay, stuff. okay. I'll take a look on all three of these and for the, before next meeting. Okay, and just and for these two, Vinod, yep. it's just kind of reading them and. Yep. just kind of getting us back into the mindset and if you think there's any like gaps okay maybe you could just I, you wouldn't even need to fill them in but like just yep. where you think there might be a gap and then collectively we could work on it next okay. time okay so, I do that. we may want to we may want to look at these in relation to the other time to slash duration metrics that we have okay we have several change request duration Okay, I got uh, it. Yeah, there's time to time uh, to close. I think. Yeah, time uh, to close. Time to first response. I think. Yeah. Time to issue response time. Yep. Uh, issue resolution duration. Yeah. Uh, so it looks like some of the language the language is different. Okay. In how some of these are named and probably different in some of the uh, uh, yeah this 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 could be this could be a little tricky <laughs> what what I'll do is I'll go through all of these and find out okay what are the differences or similarities or any deviation from the language or anything I'll just point out those things for the community to discuss it out in the next meeting that'd be perfect okay excellent thank you man yeah thanks all right we have a lot of action items elizabeth handbook sean google summer code stuff kevin I already did his some stuff yeah i already uh, edited those. i got some labels the label one i didn't get to yeah. oh yeah sean you have labels and we have some metrics but, but the google summer of code i made a nice little clear statement about you should document everything I think, okay. it sounds, I think it sounds a little parental, but that's fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, and I'll keep working on this data use awareness statement to kind of work that out. All right, cool. We'll have to talk about it in two weeks. Yeah, talk to you all soon in two weeks, but probably sooner than another meeting. That's probably correct. All right, we'll see you later. Okay. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye.